Today I'm going to show you how to create this particle effect in Unity. We'll start in Blender and we'll create 16 different versions of a cloud on a 4x4 spray sheet. Then we'll take that into Unity and use that and randomly display one of those 16 textures for each cloud. This tutorial assumes you're at least a little familiar with each program. Here I am in Blender and I'm just going to switch to the Cycles Render Engine and enable GPU Compute. It's not necessary but it works better for me. I'm going to delete that cube and hit Shift A and bring in a plane here. I'm going to hit 7 on the number pad so I'm viewing things from above and hit Control, Alt, and 0 on the number pad to switch the camera view to above. I'm going to split the screen and change the left side to the shader editor. I'm going to hit N to get rid of that shelf and put that material that was on our cube onto our plane. I'm going to bring in a checker texture and uh, let's just see what that looks like. I'm going to set the checker texture to uh, the object output on the texture coordinate node and the scale to 2 so that it's just a 4x4 grid. Uh, you can do it however you want, it just has to be 4x4. I'm going to change the resolution to 1080 by 1080 and go to the camera settings and change it from perspective to orthographic. Then the orthographic scale is going to be adjusted until it just fills the same size as that plane, which is just a scale of 2. I'm going to hit Shift A and bring in an icosphere. Uh, this is going to be our cloud and I'm going to scale it down, just kind of eyeball it. It doesn't really matter. Go from uh, the top view again with 7 and just move it into the first uh, plane area there, the first square. And then I'm going to add an array modifier and uh, this is just going to spread it out to the uh, horizontal direction there. And I'm going to put the count to 4 and adjust the factor till it looks okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Don't worry about it too much. Uh, 1.32 works pretty well. I'm going to add a second array modifier as well. I guess 1.31. Uh, second array modifier and this is just going to be a factor of 0 on the x and negative 1.2 or 1.25 I think I did on the other one. And uh, we'll do the count to 4 as well. Then I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier just so I'm going to be able to displace this and it'll look kind of cool. I'm going to add a new material here. We'll just call it sphere. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you call it. We'll come down to the settings and we have to enable displacement and it's just going to be under displacement. We'll do displacement and bump. And then we'll add uh, some noise textures here and just make a cloud texture. It's going to be pretty simple. I'll just do a noise texture, hit control T to bring up the texture coordinate and mapping node and a second noise texture and then a mix and I'll open that up and just hit C to set it to color. We'll run the vector into the B. This is just so we get like a higher frequency noise slightly mixed in to the lower frequency noise here. Um, and I'll run that into a color amp so I can adjust the contrast really easily in a visual manner. We'll put the principal BSDF there. And for now, I'm just going to set it to, uh, you know, the alpha and the base color just so we can see what's going on. Um, but we'll change it to a volume node in just a minute here. Let's crunch this color ramp so we can see the contrast a bit better, see what's going on, and we'll adjust these settings on the mix and the two noise textures. I'm going to click on this plane and click on the visibility right here so it doesn't appear in my renders or in my viewport. It's just really just to uh, line things up anyways. I'm going to go to the uh, film and transparent option as well. So if we render this out in a PNG format, the background will be transparent. I'm also going to bring in a displace node so we can actually displace these spheres. I'll just place it here and we'll run the color ramp into the height and that height into the displacement. It's a little bit too much for now. Um, you know, we'll want to back that off. I'm actually, that's the wrong one. I should be adjusting the scale there. So let's we'll bring the scale down, put that back to 0.5. Bring the scale down a little bit here to, I don't know, 0.4 or so. That looks pretty good. Render that out. Here's what it looks like so far. Uh, it doesn't look like clouds yet. No, that's okay. Let's change the levels viewport and render uh, settings on the subdivision surface just to give it more subdivision. And we can play around with this color ramp as well if we want more of the cloud texture filled in or not. Let's duplicate this color ramp so we have independent controls for our displacement and our density. So let's replace this principled BSDF with a volume node. Just search for volume and uh, principled volume there. And we'll run this color into the density. And uh, we'll just see what that looks like. We can't really see anything yet um, because it's so faint. So let's bring in a math node and let's put that there. And I'm going to change it to multiply. And we'll just bump that up so we can see what's going on. Um, it's a little dark. 
Um, maybe what I'll do is change the color there. And uh, let's also bring in a maybe an HDRI because this is looking still a little bit dark and not very dynamic. Let's bring in an HDRI. I'm going to go to the world environment textures there. Go to where I've got some HDRIs, HDRI Haven. And I've just got this one here. I'm going to turn off ray visibility for the camera so we can't see it in the background. And uh, I like the look of this better here. Let's bring down the multiply so it's not quite as dense. Um, even something like five is plenty, I think. Render this out. It's looking a lot better already. Those look like clouds, maybe a little bit too smooth. Um, maybe turn the detail up. Bring up the roughness a bit, see what that looks like. I got to take off that other noodle there. Yeah, I like the look of this actually. This looks really cool. Yeah. Yeah, this looks great. I'm happy with this. Let's turn down the samples a little bit here so it's not going to take a long time to render out. And uh, I'll just hit F12 to render this out. Once it's done, just come on up to Image and go Save As. And uh, you're just going to select where you want to save this. And we got to make sure that it's a PNG and then we got RB, RGBA selected, you know, because the A is alpha as well. We want that transparency. I'll just call this Clouds PNG and uh, we'll just save it. So here we are in Unity. This is just a regular built in render pipeline project, uh, nothing special about it. I'm just going to drag the Clouds file into uh, the uh, game project window there, and we're going to create a new material. That material is going to have that uh, clouds texture on it. We'll just call this cloud, whatever, I don't know, mat. Let's go cloud mat. And we need to grab that and change the type of shader to particles standard unlit. Otherwise, the color changing and fading in and out, fading in and out won't work. And we'll change the rendering mode to fade. I found that works best for these clouds. For other stuff, you might want something different. Let's drag that clouds into the albedo, and you should see uh, the image in the bottom right there. Let's create an empty. This is going to be the holder for the particle system. We'll just call this cloud particles. And uh, I'm just going to reset the transform by right clicking on the component there. And we'll bring in a particle system, which is under effects there. And um, we can call this clouds. You know, why not? Drag that down. I'm going to set the start speed to zero. Might change that in a bit, but I'll do it for zero for now. And um, scroll down to texture sheet animation. We'll click that. We'll open up renderer and we'll leave it on billboard. We'll drag the cloud mat into there. And then we'll go up to the texture sheet animation and we'll go tiles four by four. And right now it's cycling through every one. We don't want that. We want to change it to a constant, uh, random between two constants, rather. So it's going to be 0 to 16. So now it's not changing between them. It's just selecting one of those 16 textures. Let's do something with the shape. We'll change it to a sphere um, for the emission shape. We'll just change the dimensions to something a little wider. Let's open up the uh, scene window. I don't know why we're working on the game window there, but let's go to the scale. We'll go to, like, I don't know, 5 by three, by five, five by two, by five works. Yeah, that's good. Scroll down to uh, color over lifetime. And this is how we're gonna make it change color or fade in and out. And we're just gonna do fading here. So um, now that that's checked, we can just open that up. And on the top there, we can change the alpha. So click to create a new flag or drag around an existing flag and just change that alpha to uh, you know change how it fades in and out. Basically, it fades in quickly, fades out a little bit more slowly, and you can see that with the particle system. The start lifetime, too. Let's change this random between two constants. We'll go, I don't know, like three to six. So now they last three to six seconds. Start delay, too. We'll change between two constants, maybe zero to, I don't know, 1.5. And uh, for start size, random between two constants again, let's go two to three. That's looking better already. Let's add another particle system as well. Um, just go ahead, click one in here. We don't want the parent of the clouds. We'll just make it the same level as the clouds there. And um, we're going to change this to start speed of zero. And uh, the same kind of size of shape as well. We'll do another sphere. And um, let's change it to 5 by 3 by 5. 
so I guess a little taller than the other one. And we'll go color over lifetime. We'll just change it from, you know, the same kind of thing, fading in and out. And um, we'll also make the color change from white to maybe a blue color here. You can hit delete if you make too many flags. Just click on it and hit delete. Yeah, so now we got it uh, going from white to blue. And maybe let's make it be white a little bit longer. And um, yeah, that's fine. Let's go to noise here. We'll change down the strength, turn down the strength to 0 0.2, and maybe turn up the frequency a little bit here as well. And let's also do some lights. So we'll change the ratio, basically 0.4%, like 40% of these particles are gonna have lights. And um, we could change some other settings. I won't worry about it too much here. We'll also put a trail on these particles. So let's open that up here. We're gonna go ratio, we'll just leave it at one so 100% of the particles have trails. And we'll lower this number so that the trails are a little bit smoother, less jagged. And this is the width here, we'll turn that quite far down. Maybe that's too far down. Maybe 0.1 is a bit better. No, that's too big. Yeah, 0 0.05 is fine for now. We can always change that. Or maybe 0 0.03. Let's go back to the clouds for a second here. And uh, why don't we turn this up? We'll turn it up to like 30 or something like that. Let's see what this looks like so far. Yeah, it's looking good. Let's go to the particle system there for a second. Let's make it so that they're in front of the clouds as well. We'll change the order and layer to five. So that means they're going to always appear in front of those clouds there. Yeah, let's change the width to a little bit skinnier, maybe 0 0.01 is a bit better. Change uh, random between two constants, uh, three to five. And we'll change the start delay random between two constants, uh, zero to two. Maybe the last thing we could do is change the start speed of the clouds to something like 0.1 or 0.2, just so they're slowly moving outwards from this sphere emitter. Let's go to the particle system as well and just change the start size so they're a bit smaller, maybe 0 0.2 to uh, 0.3. So that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed that and hope you can see the powerful role that procedural generation can play in creating images for particle systems in Unity. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.